Uh, thank you, and welcome everybody to this month's Connect with Remedy monthly webinar series. Today we're going to present on Smart IT Performance Considerations. During the presentation, if you have any questions, you can ask them via the Q&A pod, and our panelists will be able to address those questions during the presentation. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to Seema Call, our presenter today. Thank you, Greg. Um, this is Seema Call. Uh, I'm principal product developer with BNC Software. I have been with BNC for many years, um, worked uh, on lots of uh, ITSM applications for many years. Currently, I am working on Smart IT and uh, mainly engaged with uh, solving customer issues. Of late, I've been uh, engaged with a um, lot of customers solving their performance issues, hence this webinar. Um, and to share some of the experience. Agenda for today, um, talk about performance use cases, um, uh, the common performance use cases uh, that are sensitive to uh, um, performance issues in Smart IT. Discuss the Smart IT environment configurations to help with, uh, that help, uh, that are important for performance. SQL tuning for uh, long running queries, database tuning, then we put together some reference links that can help you, um, you know, tune your environment better. And finally, summary and Q and A. Um, performance use cases. Global search. Global search is one of the uh, common functionalities uh, used in Smart IT. It is used for searching all types of tickets, knowledge articles, assets. People. So the screenshot here shows you uh, how to access global search. For most of the folks that are familiar with Smart IT, they should be quite familiar with this. Um, so when you type in, when you launch the, uh, click the search field, you will see a field where you can type in a string that you're searching for. When you type in a string, it returns tickets. Uh, which are all types of tickets, uh, change requests, incidents, work orders, service requests, and it also returns knowledge articles, it will return people, and it will return assets. For tickets and knowledge articles, the uh, full text search uh, capability of AR system is used, which is referred to as, for in short, FTS. So um, it is important that FTS is configured and configured properly for uh, these types of tickets and knowledge uh, articles to return. Unlike ITSM, Smart IT is a lot more dependent on FTS. There's a lot of core functionalities in Smart IT that utilizes FTS. So, um, so you need to ensure um, FTS is configured uh, well you can access the FTS uh, tab on um, the AR Server con Administration uh, Console System General Server Information FTS and make sure FTS is enabled. Um, FTS Server Performance should be uh, uh, good. FTS fortification should be uh, done if needed. There's a very good article on the communities on how to do the FTS fortification in case you have, like for example, additional fields uh, that are set up with FTS and um, which are not needed, redundant fields, so you can drop those if if you're not those are not being used. So as I said, um, F, a global search you uh, returns tickets, and knowledge articles, but it also returns assets and people. For assets and people. It, we use AR API, so it does not rely on FTS. So people, uh, usually we haven't had many issues in terms of performance. People, uh, people data is returned quite fast. Assets can uh, cause performance issues if the asset area is not tuned and configured as um, recommended. And this is, especially uh, more obvious when you have a large CMDB. So when uh, under the covers, when you uh, launch the global search, uh, 
so one of the part, one part of the search returns the assets. So when the asset search is made, it uh, it searches against AST based element, which is an ITSM uh, form, and it searches against the fields name, serial number, model, tag number, CIID. So those are five fields that get searched against that string by default. Uh, in a lot of organizations, um, people uh, do not use tag number and CIID. So if you're not using tag, I, uh, tag number and CIID, uh, we recommend to turn it off. There's a configuration in the Smart IT database. There's a flag called is exclude underscore tag underscore and CIID. So what it does is if you set it to true, then Searching on tag number and CIID will not be made. You will only search the string against name, serial number, and model. This has also um, been proven in our performance lab to work faster. So uh, because tag number and CIID come from um, a different table. So AST base element, for those of you who are familiar with the CMDB and asset management, is a join between uh, core base element and AST attributes form. So name, serial number, model come from the base element, tag number and CIID come from AST attributes. So under the cover database has to only get data from one part of the join and it's much faster. So I would recommend turn this, make sure to turn this flag, set this flag to true if you're not searching on tag number and CIID and this will vastly improve the performance. Another flag in the database, uh, in the Smart ID database that we have is leading search for asset. This flag is set to true and that is how it should be for better performance. So what it does is when you type in a string, um, it puts in a percent, uh, which is a wildcard at the end of the string. So if you type in optiplex, it'll um, search for name like optiplex percent. Uh, which in that case, index will be utilized. However, if you uh, go and uh, just, uh, switch this flag to false, this can impact performance because there would be a percent stuck in the beginning. So it'll be percent, optiplex, percent. And in that case, um, the index may not get utilized. So both these flags, the exclude uh, flag for tag number CIID and uh, the leading search for asset flag, both can be found in the Smart ID database. A couple other um, and things to consider for better asset performance is um, uh, review the join criteria on the AST base element. Uh, by default, um, there is uh, the, the qualification uh, is uh, uh, is reconciliation ID equal to reconciliation ID or reconciliation ID equal to instance ID. The or part of the qualification can be eliminated or removed if you do not care to return unreconciled assets. So this causes performance degradation. Um, this has actually been fixed. Um, in one of the hot fixes in ITSM for performance benefits. If you're using a latest hot fix or patch, you probably already have it in place. But, uh, but if you're experiencing slowness in retrieving asset records, review this qualification. Um, so um, as I said, um, when we search for assets, we make a search on the AST based element and we search against um, um, against uh, on the serial number model name uh, by default if tag number and CIID are turned off. So exam this is the qualification, how it looks like. So we need to make sure the fields that are part of the where clause. So if you have tag number and CIID um, turned off, then you'll only see three fields here in the where if you have the part that is highlighted in red. But if you have all of them enabled, then you'll have the five as I've shown it here. So you need to make sure you have individual indexes on these fields. So for example, you should have an individual index on serial number, 
you should have an individual index on model number, you should have an individual index on name, and you should also have a composite index comprising of company, class ID, and data, site, and data set ID. And those are also a part of the qualification. I've truncated the qualification here, but that this is recommended for the qualification to work better. So another uh, common use case is the asset details. So we've noticed in some customer instances, opening asset details was slow. So when you open asset details, we also load various uh, relationships for the assets. So one of the relationships um, in certain cases we've noticed taking time is the asset to asset relationship. So you need to make sure we have the following index on the base relationship uh, table. Uh, source reconciliation ID and destination reconciliation ID, those indexes are in place. For most cases, they should be there out of the box, but we've noticed a few instances where one of them was missing, and uh, once we added um, the right indexes, the asset details loaded pretty fast. Ticket console. Ticket console is um, another important and uh, very commonly used use case in Smart IT. And this use case is prone to performance issues if um, things are not tuned well. So to understand it a little better, ticket console is equivalent of um, your overview console uh, in ITSM, for those of you who are familiar with ITSM. Um, it shows data from all uh, types of tickets. So when you launch into the ticket console, it's the console for the agent. He can see all the tickets um, assigned to him or his group. There are two default filters out of the box that show you um, the data. So to understand how the data comes in, we have a uh, union view in the database which joins the individual views on top of various ticket types. In, in Smart IT, we've created a view form uh, which is called share union overview underscore master console. This view form points to this union view, and uh, Smart IT fetches the data via this union, uh, the view form. For performance considerations, um, like any other uh, you know, query, indexes on all the underlying tables should be reviewed. Indexes for this console are documented on our uh, documentation uh, website. Uh, so we need to make sure uh, that those are actually in place. Because if the right indexes are not in place, um, it can take time for the queries to load. And it's, it is especially more obvious as your data keeps growing. You know, initially, if you're starting with a clean uh, database, it might appear fast. But as the number of tickets grow, uh, the ticket console can take time to load the data if you don't have the right indexes in place. The Ticket Console also gives you capability to add additional um, filters. You know, by out of the box, we have show me my uh, tickets assigned to me or tickets assigned to my group. So these additional filters allow you to create um, additional qualifications. And uh, and depending upon the type of filters you use, they could they could be utilizing some out of the box indexes that are already in place. However, if certain queries are not working well, are not uh, returning data in a timely fashion, then you should review the query and make sure you have the indexes in place. Smart Recorder. Smart Recorder is another use case. Um, uh, it, uh, it's, it's a primary interface for uh, recording your uh, ticket. So whenever you want to create an incident or a work order 
or even a service request, um, if an agent is creating a service request, you would use the smart recorder um, interface. Um, while recording this ticket, Smart Recorder brings up user info, asset info, open resolve ticket for the user, similar tickets, relevant articles, etc. So it brings in a lot of data in context to the user that you typed or in context to the problem uh, you entered that the user is facing. So there's a lot of things happening on the uh, Smart Recorder as you try to record the ticket. If some of the um, uh, areas or some of the components of the um, application are not tuned well, that search can take time. So, um, so you need to pay attention to, okay, understand, you need to understand what all is happening and if certain area is not well, maybe look at tuning that. Here's a screenshot of um, a smart recorder for folks who haven't had a chance to <clears throat> look at it yet. So, um, so, so you type in at uh, the username, which is the Bob Baxter, has email issue. So you'll say at Bob Baxter has email issue. And the smart recorder brings up all the relevant information for Bob Baxter. Bob Baxter is the customer, so you can see customer information. Further down the screen, you see Bob Baxter's um, assets that he's using. You'll see Bob Baxter's open and resolve tickets. And then as you typed, has email issue. So in context to that, on the right-hand side, you will see templates that could be utilized to record the ticket. You can also see knowledge articles that match the uh, description uh, of the problem. You also see similar tickets that you might be utilized to mark your ticket as a duplicate of that or get information from that. So all these smart searches are given to you to resolve the ticket faster. But the point here is to understand there's a lot happening here, right? There's a lot of searches happening. So you need to make sure everything is returning fast and understand how it works. So when you say add person, what it does is it goes and searches against CTM people form uh, for first name, last name, login, full name, corporate ID, email ID. So Bob Baxter is searching against all these fields. And it's based on the matches in these fields, it returns the data. So uh, for most part, there are indexes in place for these fields that we utilize for um, retrieving the data. However, if you're experiencing slowness, you know, review, review these fields, review the indexes on CTM form and see if there is anything missing. Open uh, resolve tickets. Uh, so this is the user's open resolve ticket, which is also returned. In this case, the search is made against the same form that is used for the ticket console, which is um, the share union overview master console. Um, there have been instances, um, a lot of instances where this data is not returning in a timely fashion. So uh, in most cases, the issue was related to the indexes. Once the indexes were added, um, the data returned faster. Again, these uh, index recommendations for this is documented on the um, documentation website. And you can refer to that, make sure you have the right indexes if you're experiencing slowness in this area. And we also return users' assets. Typically, it's been okay because it's just a small set of assets for the user. Resources on the right-hand side, in certain cases, have, been, have, have, been, have seen problems. Um, and typically, it's been an issue with some FTS configuration. Once the FTS is configured well, you will see templates, knowledge articles, and similar tickets returned. Another use case that uh, comes up in the field is save and update tickets. Typically, um, we haven't really fixed anything uh, or added any special indexes for save and update specifically. 
we've noticed save and update taking time. Typically, um, whenever the environment is overall not working well. So the environmental slowness will cause slowness of the, um, of the save and update. So if you're experiencing slowness in this, so make sure you're, you're reviewing uh, the Smart IT environment and make sure it's all tuned well. You should also look at uh, if there are any queries, long-running queries that users are making which are not tuned well and um, you know, review those to make them efficient because that can impact the overall environment. There's also, at times, we've noticed that there is, a, uh, there is this functionality. We, we'll talk about that in detail more uh, as we mo further move along the presentation. There is uh, the social uh, component of Smart ID, which utilizes a form called um, Social Bridge, SHR colon SHRCA underscore Social Bridge. It's similar to CAI events uh, for those uh, who are familiar with um, ITSM SRM. It's a temporary form used to uh, transfer data from ITSM over to a social database, which is the Mongo database. If things get stuck here, if the records get stuck here and not processed in a timely manner, the number of records in this form can grow and can cause contribute to the slowness greatly. So you need to pay attention to this form as well to make sure it is working well. So moving on, um, this slide gives you a high-level architecture of how smart IT environment looks like. So if you, if you see here, we have the smart IT servers, um, which correspond with the AR ITSM. So smart IT sits on top of AR ITSM, right? So we have the smart IT servers, we have the AR uh, ITSM servers, then we also um, have uh, a component called Mongo database where we store the social uh, data. So that's another component of the Smart IT. We have the chat server, so chat can be installed on the same server as Smart IT, or you can have a separate um, server or a group of servers for chat. Then you can have an RSSO component. Um, you also have the database. One database is under the AR ITSM. Then you also have a database that is um, directly um, connected to Smart ID. So there are two databases: one direct uh, database under Smart ID, and one is the database under the AR ITSM. So, and and then you have, of course, your clients that, uh, which will be the web clients and the mobile clients that talk to a smart IT uh, via the load balancer or without the load balancer, depending upon your environment. So this gives you a high-level picture of, okay, what all is there and where all the performance could go wrong, right? So, so when you look at uh, the performance uh, considerations, you need to review all of these environments to make sure they're all working well. So reviewing the AR server configuration. So when you're reviewing the AR server configuration, make sure to look at all the servers in the server group. So when server, Smart IT talks to AR ITSM, the request can go to any of the servers in the server group. You need to make sure AR resources such as disk space, memory, etc., are all um, there's enough of those for uh, the request to get processed. Make sure there are enough heads configured on each of the servers. Make sure we have a JVM settings configured um, as recommended, um, which include JVM memory, garbage collection settings, verbose logging, etc. All of these settings uh, for AR are documented in great detail in the link provided here. So you can go to this link and review all the settings as, uh, as needed for the environment. FTS, as, um, as we all understand, FTS is a core, uh, a core piece of uh, uh, Smart IT. 
the reviewing FTS uh, 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 is important. So FTE, FTS server performance is very important. There's also a setting for a full text uh, search uh, threshold in the FTS tab of the um, server information page. By default, this is set to 10,000. You need to make sure uh, this is, um, you know, set to 2,000 or lower. I, I mean, we know customers who set it to uh, even 200, uh, depending upon uh, the number of, um, you know, data that you're interested in. So setting it to higher number means AR has to do a lot more work. If it's set to 10,000, it'll fetch 10,000 records, do all kinds of, you know, memory, uh, I mean, all kinds of permission checks, et cetera. So a lot more work has to be done when the setting is at uh, 10,000. So the lower number will greatly improve the performance. You know, if, if you are, if returning the resources section in Smart Recorder is taking time, if returning the tickets on the ticket console is taking time, you should review this setting. Next thing is the Smart IT server configuration. For Smart IT um, web, uh, web app uh, server also, like AR server, you need to make sure you review the resources, you know, which is the memory, disk space, all the obvious ones. Make sure there's enough of that for the Smart IT servers to work well. Review the JVM settings uh, as per the performance tuning recommendations. So we had a customer engagement where, uh, you know, most of the JVM settings um, were, I mean, set up as documented, but there were a few things that did not, uh, wasn't set properly, um, and, and changing that made a difference. For example, one of the issues was um, the verbose logging uh, for the JVM was on, so turning it off um, made a difference. It, it's very uh, performance intensive. So here are examples of some of the settings changes um, that was made for one of the customers. We changed the firm space allocation to meta space. We changed uh, the um, garbage collection to low cost uh, GC. Then we added usage of hybrid mode pointer to offset 64 bit overhead and turned off verbose login for garbage collection. And, uh, and the performance was improved. So the next thing, uh, the next component in the environment is the social piece. So the social, um, uh, social configuration is the configuration that is around the social data. So what is social data? Social data is the data um, that we store in the MongoDB. What we, uh, so the data like um, work info, data like um, some ticket uh, information like broadcast, et cetera, are stored in MongoDB also. So this data can be shared with other apps, uh, et cetera. So we call it social data. So whenever you hear somebody called social, um, you know, so it's basically referring to um, the data that we store in the Mongo database. So there are various pieces that uh, need to be considered here is the social plugin, on, which is installed on the ITSM, then the Mongo database itself, and the social configuration. Social plugin. Social plugin is a plugin and that is installed by the Smart IT user experience patch. So the Smart IT installer has two pieces, uh, the user experience uh, patch that goes on the ITSM server and then the main Smart IT installer that's installed on the Smart IT uh, server. Smart IT user experience patch installs the social plugin. The plugin is called the social event manager dot jar. It, you can uh, find it under AR system plugin server FND folder. This plugin is responsible for updating the Mongo database. There's also a workflow uh, installed on um, the ITSM server by the user experience patch. Um, and there's also a form called the social bridge form, which I mentioned earlier, that is installed on the um, ITSM server. So this workflow that is installed um, creates entries in this social bridge form 
whenever new tickets are created in ITSM or whenever work info is added in ITSM to the tickets. Uh, so the entries get created in this form. Records in the social bridge form are then processed by the social plugin that is um, installed um, by the ITSM user experience patch. If records uh, are getting stuck here um, in, in this social bridge form, that can contribute to the slow performance in smart IT and ITSM. So you need to make sure records are getting processed immediately in this form. The typical issues here with the, um, with the social bridge form, uh, why records could get stuck here are one of the following uh, listed here. Records can get stuck uh, due to configuration issues in the uh, key store form. Key store form is the form installed on um, the ITSM um, uh, database also uh, by the Smart IT installer. Here we have a URL for the Smart IT host. This URL may not be correct, right? So if you don't have a correct URL for the Smart IT, uh, it doesn't know where to direct it. Secret and token um, may not be correct. That can also contribute uh, to uh, the issues uh, with the social bridge form. If you have an SSL setup, um, and you don't have valid Smart ID certificate uh, for um, then that can cause an issue, right? You need to have the valid Smart ID certificate on the AR server security folder, um, and you also need to have the same certificate on the Smart ID. You could have old records uh, stuck here uh, in the social bridge form. These records could be from while you were testing or it could be while you had some problem. And once you fix the problem, you need to make sure these records are uh, processed or you should delete them if you don't care for those, uh, you know, records. You need to keep the data in the social bridge form lean and clean, right? I mean, whatever is coming in should get processed and move on. You could also, you know, run into a defect uh, with the plugin maybe not picking up some characters in the uh, in the note that is being transferred over to the social uh, database, right? So you need to keep an eye. If something is getting stuck here, you need to understand why it's getting stuck. There's also social configuration uh, file uh, on the Smart ID uh, server, uh, which you should review. Uh, for correct Mongo server names and authentication parameters to make sure, uh, you know, it's, it's um, set up correctly. There's also plugin server underscore config.xml. Um, haven't typically seen any problems with this. Um, here, the plugin is registered. If it's not correctly registered here, uh, then the plugin may not uh, get loaded but uh, this is usually um, updated by the installer and um, haven't actually seen an issue with this so far. So mostly uh, been issues with certificates not valid and key store information. If somebody manually messed around with the key store information, then that could be a problem. I mean, key store is also updated by the installer uh, and it's just, uh, but these are the things you can actually kind of review and make sure they're all correct. Here are showing you some of the screenshots of um, the social bridge form uh, if when records get stuck here. So this screenshot shows you um, record getting stuck because of um, an expired certificate. You need to make sure you have the right certificate this screenshot shows you um, a record getting stuck here in processing state. It could be uh, maybe um, the escalation thread died or something. You can process these records again. You should just put it back in, uh, you know, um, in a state uh, to reprocess it and then get these records cleared out.
Okay, so um, another piece in the social configuration is the Mongo database. Mongo database is the database where the social data is stored. If Mongo data is not retrieving fast, you need to Mongo resources are adequate. You should also review a Mongo configuration for uh, uh, for the storage, the type of storage is set up with it. We've noticed this issue with uh, uh, with one or two customers where um, you know um, Mongo storage was not set up uh, for Wire Tiger. With Mongo version 3.2. Wire Tiger is a, uh, is the default storage engine, whereas with versions less than 3.2, Wire Tiger needs to be configured. You have the capability to configure the storage to be uh, to utilize Wire Tiger uh, storage engine. Wire Tiger is basically a newer type of storage engine for Mongo, which uses data compression and can do multi-threading um, when you have, you know, multiple CPUs on the server. So it is really um, helpful from the performance perspective. We've seen data getting compressed to almost one-sixth the size um, with and without Mongo, right? With, Mongo, with sorry, with uh, Wire Tiger. This, is, this becomes obvious as the data in the Mongo database grows. After a certain, when you reach a certain threshold, you start noticing performance issues if you do not have it set up uh, with the Wire Tiger storage. Should also review the authentication setup uh, to make sure all the servers are set up correctly. There is also um, social configuration uh, for Mongo database uh, three dot. X, uh, if it is set up with Wire Tiger storage engine and replica set. Replica set is um, basically like your, uh, you know, a server group type of environment for Mongo. So you can have primary Mongo, secondary Mongo, etc. So in in the there is a configuration file for um, social uh, on the Smart ID server, which is the config.js file. In this file you need to make sure you set the read preference to primary. So, um, so this is um, good only if you are using the Wire Tiger storage engine. And, and obviously you should make sure the correct Mongo servers and authentication info is defined in, the, in this config.js file. Config.js file has the information about what Mongo servers you're using, authentication information that is used. You should review that and make sure that's all correct because this is the configuration file that is used for, um, uh, uh, used by Smart ID server to correspond to the Mongo server. Open file settings. So open file, as we noticed in the architecture picture earlier, open fire um, is another component in the smart IT environment. So smart IT install can install the open fire chat um, or it can be installed on a separate environment. So you can have the smart uh, open fire on the same server as smart IT or it can be on a separate environment in a in a server group or without the server group. However, we've noticed a lot of customers do not use, um, you know, the open uh, the chat in Smart IT. So, if you're not using the Open Fire chat, you should make sure you uh, disable it completely in the Connect Dot properties. Uh, misconfigured chat can cause uh, client side of Noticed um, in some customer um, instances where they had. Open fire disabled on, they had three smart ID servers, so it was disabled on uh, two of the servers and um, not disabled on one of the servers. And since Open Fire um, uh, was not configured in the Open Fire admin console, it was fine. I mean, it wasn't causing any functional issues, but 
at the client side, you were seeing uh, degradation. You know, whenever the uh, whenever the calls were going to this third server because it's thinking a chat is on, and then it's uh, just the calls are failing. So there's no uh, perform. I mean, functional Im implication, but it's just extra work that can be avoided if you completely uh, cleanly disable open fire if it's not needed in the connect dot properties which is a smart it configuration file can be found on the smart it server so there's a connect dot properties on each of these smart it servers the next thing to look into is the integrations to itsm smart it uh, Slowness can be caused by uh, poorly configured um, ITSM integrations. If the ITSM integration is not configured properly, it can cause slowness. We've had instances where uh, there's an integration pumping in uh, data to ITSM, everything is working fine, and suddenly uh, maybe you're running into a bug in the integration and it's just pumping uh, 10 times the data it needs to, um, and it's hogging up the resources, uh, causing DB contentions, DB locking, and which causes the environment slowness. So, you know, once you fix the underlying problem, um, the, uh, the, the, the issue will be resolved, right? So you need to make sure um, you don't have any mis uh, poorly configured integrations that are hogging up the resources or you're not uh, importing large uh, data loads during peak time and making the database busy, you know. So, so those things should be reviewed um, to make sure um, there is enough, you know, resources available uh, during peak hours for users to access the environment. AR query performance. So um, identify the slow use cases or the long running queries. Um, so, so, so you can have, um, in smart IT, you can have uh, certain queries um, uh, taking time or you could have um, people using wildcards in areas um, and causing a long running queries. You need to identify use cases that are slow, ident identify um, queries that are taking long time, because queries that could be hogging up the resources can cause overall slowness. So, um, so you can use um, AR API SQL logs to uh, capture the SQL for those queries. You can also get the uh, SQL, um, you know, at the DB level with the help of your DBA. We have tools like um, AR analyzer tools um, that can help uh, analyze these logs and identify the long running queries. Um, so you need to make sure those queries are tuned that could be bringing. Them. So tuning means adding the right indexes, making sure uh, table scans are not happening. Uh, um, Identify what is uh, so. So use you can leverage your DBA and run the uh, query directly. Once you identify the long running queries, you can take the query with the help of your DBA, try and run it at the database directly. Identify the cost of the missing index. Okay, if this query is doing a table scan, what is the um, uh, cost of the missing index? Identify how many reads it's doing to uh, to make the query or complete the query. So understanding that is important because once you identify the index, then you need to rerun to make sure the query the cost is actually going down, the number of reads are going down. Because if those are not uh, improving, then adding the index is really not useful. So um, so uh, so the point is to make sure if you have any slow running queries or queries that are taking long time, you need to make sure you get to them, identify the root cause, and add the necessary uh, indexes uh, that will help them uh, run faster. 
So, um, so while you are uh, considering adding indexes, while adding indexes will help improve uh, improve running the query faster, but adding too many indexes can also uh, cause slowness. So you have to be careful when you try to add indexes. You know, when you when you when you run the query, database will give you a recommendation of the index. Review the recommendation. Sometimes database gives you way too many fields uh, in the recommended index than are actually needed. So, so you can always trim down on the number of um, fields in the index. It will usually include all the fields in the where clause and maybe also the fields in the select and all that stuff. So in most cases, I've noticed you only need fields that are part of the where. So you can start with that, then add more if the cost is not going down or if the reads are not going down. But uh, yeah, be careful um, before you add more indexes. You can add temporarily at the database level, uh, run the query again with the index, and see if there is an improvement. Once you notice the uh, index is improving the query runtime and the number of reads, then you can go ahead and add it uh, using the Dev Studio. So adding from the Dev Studio is important because the index will retain even after the upgrade. So make sure you're not adding the index just at the, uh, from the database because you, you, it may not remain there once you upgrade. Or if you modify the form, you, the index might get dropped. So, um, so the other thing we've noticed in some, you know, customer situations, you know, when 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 things are slow, we we review a lot of things, including the unused indexes. So uh, be careful with dropping unused indexes, you know, especially if they are out of the box indexes. I mean, it's good to uh, not have overheads if they're not really needed, but. Um, but uh, we just have to be careful here because we could have a release coming out uh, in the future that could utilize one of the indexes and uh, and then uh, you know the query may not perform faster if you dropped one of the, the out of the box index the social mongo queries are um, the other thing that you should be paying attention to so, so you could have uh, all the ITSM side of the data now um, tuned well and all the queries that go to ITSM, the data is being written fast enough. So, but uh, there's activity data um, on the tickets or the update feeds on the dashboard um, that is not loading fast. So that is the data that is coming from Mongo database. That is what we refer to as the social data. So if any of this data, the activity data or the update data seems to be slow, um, you should uh, review your Mongo environment. It could indicate that your Mongo uh, environment is slow. It could be related to uh, some configuration on the Mongo side, um, maybe Mongo resources like, you know, like, like here we reviewed the ITSM resources, or the smart ID resources. Similarly, you should review the Mongo server resources to make sure they are all um, up to the mark. Uh, you should make sure MongoDB is set up with virus tiger storage. You should make sure that config.js um, for the social is correctly set up. And if you're using wire tiger storage, make sure the read preference is set to primary. So those are some of the things that we should pay attention to. Uh, database tuning. So, um, so we've looked at you know um, um, the various um, you know the, all the AR uh, AR uh, AR AR environment. We looked at the smart IT environment. We looked at the Mongo environment. All of that is tuned. Next thing to pay attention to is the database. If the queries are taking longer at the database level, especially during peak hours, in spite of having all the right indexes, maybe your database is not tuned well. So you need to review uh, your database settings. 
uh, you need to make sure you have enough buffer and procedure cache. You need to make sure you have uh, uh, enough, uh, enough, enough resources for these. So buffer cache comes into picture if you are uh, dealing with large amounts of data returned by queries. It can fill up the buffer, right? Uh, and then if there isn't enough memory, it has to do a lot of swapping back and forth. Not enough procedure cache. Um, in, in, when you run a query at the database level, first time when you run a query, uh, it can take longer because it has to do uh, extra work, like it has to generate execution plans uh, for the query. So when you run the query second time, third time, etc., those execution plans, if there is enough procedure cache, can stay in the memory uh, for some time, and subsequent runs are usually faster. That's why, you know, usually when you might have noticed, when you run a certain query second time, third time, it will be faster than the first time because a database remembers certain part of the query and uh, and it works faster. But if if database is not uh, does not have enough resources for the procedure cache, every time it runs the query, it has to do all the work. It has to generate the execution plan. It has to do compile the plan and then run the query. So uh, so pay attention to uh, that if the queries are uh, performing uh, not uh, not as expected. Um, there are here, here are a few other, uh, settings uh, that are uh, you know that uh, that are important. I mean, there's a lot of database settings that should be considered. There is a complete um, the, uh, detailed link um, in the next slide uh, in the reference slide that uh, you should refer to. But uh, I've highlighted a few here that should be considered. Uh, and that we've uh, actually uh, encountered in the field that actually helped with improving the performance of the execution of the query. The degree of parallelism. Based on the number of processors and cores of the database server, query execution can be limited to X number of servers. For example, for Microsoft SQL, usually for servers with less than eight CPUs, um, you can, uh, there's, there's a setting um, called max dot, which is maximum degree of parallelism. It can be set to the number of uh, CPUs. So you should review this setting. By default, uh, th this is the setting on the SQL server. There's a similar setting for Oracle uh, where you can set the min, uh, min parallelism and the max parallelism. These need to be reviewed. Uh, it, it is not like, uh, okay, one setting will work for all. It can vary from environment to environment depending upon the resources. So, for example, on SQL Server, um, one of the customers, we, uh, we uh, based on their CPU, we set the max stop setting to eight, and uh, there is another component that comes along with it is cost of parallelism to 50, and that's the setting it worked for them but it was based on their CPUs. They had eight CPUs and, um, and, and depending upon the resources. You have to do a trial and error uh, to set the max stop setting. Uh, so work with your DBA, uh, review the documentation, and set the parameter correctly to see what is the right threshold for your uh, environment. This will leverage the multiple CPUs on the server uh, properly, right? There's also read committed snapshot is another setting in SQL Server. It should be turned on. It will help with fewer deadlocks and uh, fewer locks uh, for transaction, which will, you know, uh, reduce the overall overhead of the environment. This CIO uh, is something else that should also be looked at. Uh, review the uh, review what kind of storage you have. Stripe disk configuration is recommended uh, over concatenated disk uh, disks. Uh, flash drives are much faster um, versus RAID. So uh, so understand all of that. So here is the slide with uh, all the useful uh, references uh, reference links that you can refer to. 
for uh, for looking at all the settings. So there's uh, de uh, detailed database settings uh, you can find under the link to AR sizing and performance tuning. You have all the sizing information, how database should be set up, different settings for Oracle database, SQL database, whether it is uh, talking about a maximum degree of parallelism or read committed snapshot, etc. All of that is detailed in um, in in great detail on in these uh, links and explained why a certain setting will work the way it's working. You also have the Mongo uh, Mongo link, the FTS fortification link, all the smart IT links uh, um, with the recommended indexes and other troubleshooting uh, links uh, that you uh, that will help you improve your uh, uh, tune your environment and improve the uh, performance. So finally, uh, you know, to summarize. Uh, um, we, we've covered all the use cases that are very common in smart IT and prone to uh, performance. Uh, we've, uh, you know, reviewed uh, what all components uh, comprise of smart IT and what all configurations we should look at. Uh, we should make sure we tune the queries. Uh, we don't have any long-running queries uh, hogging the resources. We tune the database. Uh, uh, and with that, uh, we come to the end of this webinar, and now we have um, we're open to Q and A at this point. Great, Dave. thank you, Seema. And Steve, uh, do you have uh, questions for Seema? Um, actually, yeah, I do have several lined up. And before I get to the questions, just uh, want to remind you that you, if you have a question, you can continue using the Q and A section of the WebEx event to ask your question. And also, if your question does not get answered, it will be addressed once the Q and A gets posted with the recording um, to the BMC communities. So with that, I'll start off with the first question. How can we avoid a leading percent to be used in the qualification if the user enters a string like percent INC 0000201 percent? Um, so this one, actually, um, right now, we cannot avoid this. So in the global search uh, field, a user can type in a percent string percent. So you need to make sure you um, educate your users at this point of time to not put a leading string, uh, leading percent uh, on the global search field. Um, we do, however, have an enhancement request in the product where we are considering a configuration that if, um, if there is a leading percent entered by the user, it will be um, truncated before using it in the qualification. So if somebody put a percent, string percent, we will just get rid of the percent, uh, the leading percent. Thank you. Uh, next question is, in global search, can I access the filter up front to limit the return results? Um, actually, yes. Yeah. So the very first time, you cannot. Uh, but the second time onwards, you can access the filter to uh, to limit your searches. So there is a filter that will let you say um, search only against incidents. Um, again, we have uh, enhancement in this area where we uh, will uh, have some UI improvement in this area where you can you know, actually do some of these things up front. Thank you. Why should the read preference be set to primary Mongo in social config? Um, well, um, um, since the secondary servers are in the process of syncing primary servers, they are slow to fetch records from the uh, from, um, from the secondary server. So, um, in MongoDB 3.x, the write operation is at the record level or the low, row level, instead of at the document uh, level or the table level, as was in the MongoDB. So, uh, so, so primary server will be most available and faster to fetch the records. Therefore, um, we suggest to set the read preference to primary um, with Mongo 3.x and up when you use Wire Tiger storage. Perfect, thanks. Uh, the next question is, can we limit the searches on Smart Recorder? Uh, we cannot, yeah. We, currently, we cannot uh, limit the searches on the smart recorder. Thanks. Is Smart IT web app available as a standalone WAR file? 
uh, standalone WAR file. There, uh, so, so there, when we install a smart IT, uh, it, it's not a sta standalone WAR, WAR file. I mean, it, it, there is the installer. It installs various components. It installs a bunch of providers and the Apache uh, uh, Apache uh, Apache folder. It installs a UX folder. There's a full-fledged installer. Uh, that installs Smart ID and installs various pieces. There's, there's a bunch of forms that are imported on the IDSM server as well when we run the Smart ID installer. Okay, thank you. Is fortification supported on Remedy 9.x to also apply indexes, not only to run the reports? Uh, I need to review that. I'm not. Uh, I, it should be, but I, I'm not very certain. I, I need to get back and uh, check on that. Okay, that's fine. Uh, we'll get to the next question here. Are there is exclude flags for the other fields like serial number? No, there is no. There's only exclude exclude flag for tag number and CIID. Have there been any improvements? Slash adjustments to the social bridge for CMDB, CMDB processing. For example, when our recon slash normalization jobs run, there are thousands of entries being pushed through social bridge. Um, so we don't. We do have an option. Like if you're doing uh, big uh, loads, like UDM loads. Um, we uh, we do not sync the data right away. We do not create entries in Social Bridge. We recommend running on uh, tools like onboarding to onboard that data into Social. Um, but for asset stuff, um, I need to check on that. I don't think we have. I think it does inline uh, inline uh, uh, syncing with the Social. Okay. But that's a good, uh, good suggestion. I think uh, we could look at it um, as we do for the UDM jobs. I mean, yeah. Okay, great. Um, I only have two more questions, so I just want to remind the attendees that you do have the opportunity to ask your questions via the Q&A uh, section of the webinar event. Uh, next question is, can the storage engine be changed to Wired Tiger after the fact slash installation? Yes, you can. Thanks. Um, and the last question that I have right here is, when a filter is applied in the Ticket Console, is a search performed only in the AR Server database or in MongoDB as well? Only, um, only in the AR System database. It, it, go, it goes and searches against the union view. We talked about SHR o, uh, union overview uh, console form, um, which has the um, database views um, underneath it. So it goes to, which is the AR system database. All right, I guess we'll just pause just for a moment to see if there's any last questions that uh, we can ask live. Here's one question. Uh, does ITSM performance impact smart IT performance? Yes. Yes. That ITSM perform any uh, smart IT is it's almost like a UI on top of ITSM, right? So if ITSM is slow, um, yeah, you should not even look at smart IT. You should first fix um, ITSM. ITSM AR is very performance is very core to smart IT. This, uh, why don't we make this the last call for questions? Um, I'll go ahead and pause a moment, and then if there are no further questions, I'll turn it back over to you, Greg. So, hold on. Here's a question. It says, regarding the Smart IT WAR file, we would like to set up the components separate and have own Tomcat hosting services available, including monitoring. Are all inst installer components necessary? Sorry, I didn't get the question. Steve, can you repeat uh, that? Yeah, I will repeat it. Uh, regarding, this, uh, regarding the smart IT WAR file, 
we would like to set up the components separate and have our um, have own Tomcat hosting services available, including monitoring. Are all installer components necessary? Uh, for smart IT, yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, we only install whatever is necessary for smart IT to work. Right? It's almost like we have to break the installation into different components to understand what all is installed. So yeah, I would not, I would recommend using the installer and then you know figuring out okay what monitoring services you need to install along with it to monitor smart IT. But yeah, I would not uh, go the other route. All right, great. Well, that was our final question, so uh, Greg, I'd like to pass it over to you. Okay, great. Uh, thank you, Steve, and uh, thank you, Sema, for a great presentation and all the panelists that help answer the questions. Uh, for contacting BMC, it's available via all the social channels, as well as to contact BMC technical support uh, are listed here. Want to thank you all for uh, participating in our monthly uh, Connect with Remedy webinar series. The final video recording, clickable links, and the Q&A will be published within a week of today's live presentation. That concludes this month's webinar. Thank you.